The sixth part of the of the gearbox assembly is adding the worm gear. To add the worm gear, go up to Insert Components in the Assembly tab. You may get a dialog box that pops up automatically to insert a component from a file. But if you don't, you can click on Browse in the Property Manager to make the same dialog box show up. Find your worm gear. should be L202. Double click and you should get a graphics preview near your cursor as you hover in the graphics area. If you don't, go to the property manager and click the box that says graphics preview. Left click anywhere to insert the component into the assembly. Now we need to add this worm gear to the worm gear shaft that we have right here. To add this, first let's make things a little bit easier for ourselves by hiding the housing and the top cover. To do this, right click anywhere on the housing, go up to the pop-up toolbar and click the hide components button. And then also do the same thing for the shaft, right click, go to hide components. Now we can see the worm gear shaft a lot better. We need to add two mates between the worm gear and the worm gear shaft. A concentric mate and a parallel mate. To add a mate, go up to the assembly tab of the command manager and click mate. Then click the inner diameter surface of the worm gear. And the, uh, and the outer diameter of the worm gear shaft. SOLIDWORKS automatically suspects that we want to do a concentric relation, which means that, the, that our two cylindrical surfaces that we selected will have the same axis now. To, con to confirm this selection, go to the property manager and click OK. Notice that we're still in the mate command. We can continue to add mates to, d to define the relationships between the worm gear and the rest of the assembly. We'll add a coincident relationship now by clicking on the left surface of the keyway of the worm gear and then also on the left surface of the keyway of, of the worm gear shaft, which mines its way down here. Ah, this is interesting. I, I wasn't expecting this to happen. I wanted a parallel mate, but look what happened. It's not quite in the orientation that I want. So to flip the orientation, to flip the orientation, I can go to mate alignment in the property manager of the mate command and then click the opposite of whatever is selected. Again, here I'm under mate alignment. If you click this, it should flip the two selections to be aligned parallel and a different orientation. And indeed they are. So because this is the desired result, let's click OK in the property manager of the mate pro of the mate command the these are all the mates that we're going to add to our warm gear so click okay one more time to exit the mate command now try rotating the worm gear shaft see that the worm gear rotates with the worm gear shaft this is all from that parallel mate that we uh, that we applied Though our assembly is not fully defined, as we can see down here in the taskbar, it is defined significantly to the point where we only have a couple more mates to add to control the, tra the translation of the worm gear along the shaft. We'll find that in a different section of this assembly tutorial. 
Now is a good time to take some notes based off what we've done so far. So, I've prepared a Microsoft Word document with some sample notes that you might write. I will pause and scroll so that you can see these so that you can either copy these notes down or put them in your own words or add things that you think would be helpful to you. And before I forget, to unhide our components that we hid previously, we can go over to the Future Manager Design Tree. Our components that are hidden are the components that have a part block that is not yellow. Right click in the Future Manager and then go up to Show in the pop-up toolbar. Do these for both components. Now our assembly is back to normal.